Ah, oh, could the vibes be any more immaculate around the Dallas Mavericks? It is Mavericks today. Jeffrey Cooperstein, Harrison Graham with you. What a win last night, Cooper. Oh, Yesterday afternoon as the Mavs played overtime for the first time all season on a wild helter-skelter play that ended up in the hands of Dante Exum, which he knocked down a three, and Mavs took care of business from there to beat the Rockets. And, man, this team is hot, 14 out of 16. We're going to talk about it all here on today's show. But if you want to keep the good vibes going, if you don't want to jinx it, hit the subscribe button. Let's keep this winning streak going here for the Dallas Mavericks. We're going to cover it all leading up to the playoffs and, of course, have coverage throughout the postseason. It's YouTube.com slash Mavs TV. Do not miss out because we are going to have you guys covered. How about this performance from Kyrie Irving? What a performance. He took over in the fourth quarter and in overtime. He was terrific. 48-7-2, efficient from the field. He was doing it all for Dallas. Yeah, 25 points in the fourth quarter in overtime. And you can kind of tell early in that fourth quarter it was going to be one of those special performances from him where he just takes over the game and the offense runs through him. Uh, when, when, the, when it comes to clutch time, this Mavs team is the best clutch team in the NBA, and it's because of Kyrie Irving. It's not because of Luka. Kyrie's the guy that carries the load down the stretch, and that takes so much pressure off of Luka and allows him to just kind of play his game. And it's great to have Kyrie here uh, and d being able to knock down these kind of shots. And it just seems like he has fit, fit in perfectly to this team. Yeah, he's been terrific. Luka was great as well. Close to a triple-double again, 37-9-12. and 12. He was efficient also. And look, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to, you know, put something out there that shouldn't be out there. But I think what this is reminding me of a little bit is what we saw last year in the playoffs from Denver where – Clearly, Jokic is the man there, but how often, especially down the stretch, Coop, was it was it Jamal Murray yeah. closing these games and making plays? And look, another example is back in the Bucks title year where like Giannis gets him there, then Middleton closes it out. So like, you know, Luka can be that guy that carries the load, and obviously he's still gonna have uh, a role in the fourth quarter. It's not like he's stepping to the Correct. side, but like Kyrie Irving is one of the best closers in the sport. I mean, he leads. Uh, is he? Still I, he might be the best leading the league in fourth quarter scoring, or close to it. He's, still, I mean, he's been he's, unbelievable for this team, man. Just plain and simple. And I can't wait to see what it looks like in the playoffs. Uh, it, it, all signs point it to being Mavs Clippers Part Three, but now the Mavs may have the two best players in the series, which is uh, fantastic. And by the way, Kawhi has been uh, a little nicked up recently. Yes, he has. So we'll keep an eye on that. Can't say enough about Dante Exum, who. Just talk about a career revitalization for this guy. I mean, this guy was a bust with Sacramento, uh, or Utah, excuse me. Utah. Uh, ends up overseas. Uh, the Mavs kind of, I don't want to say throw a flyer on him because he played good overseas, but, you know, all right, you know, we'll, you'll be our 13th, 14th guy on our roster. and He's, now, he's like the third or fourth guy dude, on Dude, he's roster. in their closing lineup. I yeah. Mean, it's unbelievable. As soon as I was watching the game at my parents' house the other day, and as soon as he got the ball, I just stood up, and I, I knew it was going in. I don't know why. I just have that confidence. Great that, pass by Luca, by the way. Great pass, he draws yeah. the double, flips it back to him, and Exum shoots it with confidence. I mean, for him to grab nine rebounds, too, he, you know, we know he defends. I, I, I have the utmost confidence in him right now when he's on the court, and I believe that Jason Kidd – uh, has found his closing lineup. It's Luka, it's Kyrie, it's Exum, it's Washington. And then the five will depend on the matchup. If it's a traditional center, it'll be Gafford. Uh, if it's a more non-traditional center, it'll be Kleba, maybe even Jones. Yeah. And P.J. Washington, by the way, not his most efficient game, but he hit some big shots in overtime. Two threes in OT. Hit that <laughs> dagger three, so he's continuing to – you know, kind of figure it out offensively. I mean, we obviously didn't do a video after the prior game either, Coop. I mean, how about that performance to drop 32 on Golden State to win that game without Luka Doncic? Absolutely. I mean, he, is, he has been awesome these last two games, and I really think that P.J. Washington is going to be key to this team going forward. He is the team's best defender, which nobody saw uh, coming here after they traded uh, for him from the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, and he's going to play a, a huge role if the Mavs are to make it into May and June, for yeah, sure. I mean, who, going into the season, who would have had it on their bingo card that Dante Exum, Derrick Jones Jr., and P.J. Washington, who wasn't even on the damn roster, would play vital roles on a team that I think at this point has to be considered at least a threat to get to the NBA Finals. I, I know this was recency bias, and I was talking to you after the game. I would pick the Mavs to beat anybody in the West right now. I really would. I mean, they're rolling. I mean, 14 out of 16 is no joke. They've beaten a lot of playoff teams along the way. So, 
it's hard to it's hard to argue against. And look, when you're two dudes combined for 85 in a game, you're gonna win. You're gonna be hard to beat, man. You're I gonna mean, win. That, that is just a fact. Now, speaking of which, outside of Luca and Kyrie, who do you think is the most important player? on the Mavs. I don't think there's a right answer here. I think it, you can say it's P.J. Washington. You can say it's Gafford. You can say it's Exum. I really believe that it's one of those three guys. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would say it's Exum because he gives them that third ball handler and he gives them that security uh, if Luka and Kyrie aren't going. So I would say Exum, but I don't believe there is a wrong answer here. Man, I, I would make a strong argument for Washington and or Gafford just because the defense has improved so much since they've come over. So... I don't know. The point is, is you got multiple options. And and by the way, before the trade deadline, the answer was probably Tim Hardaway Jr., who's like your seventh most important player now? Eighth? If that, yeah. I mean, that just goes to show how much these other guys are playing well and unfortunately how much he just hasn't played that well. But uh, hey, that's neither here nor there. All right, we'll keep it rolling here. But first, let's tell you guys about our sponsor, Price Picks, pricepicks.com slash CLNS. We are closing in on the NBA and NHL playoffs. And we got the national championship tonight. Daily Fantasy, get in on the action. We got a three player entry for UConn versus Purdue. Donovan Klingon, take the more on his points there. Zach Eady, we're going to go less on points, rebounds, and assists. This is the first time he's playing a center that's in his caliber of player and clinging, so that could be a bit of a challenge for him. Uh, Stefan Castle will go less there as well. 10 to win 50. Should be a fun game tonight. Get in on the action because that's what makes these big games even more fun. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS to get a deposit match up to $100 when you sign up. Certain entries you can make up to 100 times your money right now. Go check it out. It is Prize Picks. Okay, Coop, uh, when we started this exercise, we said, all right, four and three should get the job done. And, well, you've gone three and oh uh, in, in terms of getting the job done of clinching a top six seed. And I think that's probably still the case. You could probably go one and three the rest of the way and still get at least the six seed. Yep. Now, obviously, you'd like to win at least two of these just to be safe. That also gets you to a nice 50 wins. All right, Coop, you beat Charlotte tomorrow night. Uh, you probably rest your guys at Miami the next night. Uh, you're pretty much in at that point. As long as you don't mess around against the Pistons, uh, you're going to secure a top six and most likely a five seed, which is going to set up Clippers Mavs 2.0. Yeah, go take care. Of, go take care of business against our good pal Grant Williams over there in Charlotte. Uh, <laughs> get to Miami. Let the guys go out, have a little fun at, on Miami Beach. Maybe you can go to Tim Hardaway's mansion that he has there because he wants to be a Miami Heatle so bad, uh, and just hang out there in Miami. And then you beat the Pistons and you're in. So you rest everybody against the Thunder. I think that's going to be the recipe for what they're going to do. And look, I think this team. I'm just so freaking excited, man. I just I can't wait for this. And if you win these two games, you officially solidify your spot uh, in the postseason. So it's going to be a fun ride for Yeah, sure. and the magic number to clinch the top six is two. And what that means is a combination of wins and or losses from the Suns. Uh, I guess technically New Orleans, too, because they're tied with that. Or uh, that'd be two and a half in their case. But um yeah, basically win two games or win one game, have the Suns lose a game. Like yes. It's, you're, you're in a good position here. Uh, as far as getting up to four, it's unlikely <clears throat> because the Clippers have the season series two to one. Uh, if Cleveland had won yesterday, they were up big on the Clippers and choked in the fourth quarter, um, you'd have a shot. You'd be a game back. Maybe you'd go a little harder in these final four to try and push for that four and get home court. But – I think, look, you lock up that top six, rest against OKC. Ideally, you rest against Miami as well, and uh, you gear up for hopefully what is a long playoff run. And I think, Coop, this team's been in playoff mode for a while now, and they've won 14 out of 16 doing it to put themselves in this position. Yeah. And I, have a shot at a top six. I mean, I think they're ready to go. Yeah, and I think that's a good point that they have kind of been in playoff mode because they've had to win a lot of games here to solidify their spot. So maybe that gives them a little bit of a mental edge over a team like like the Clippers, who has kind of been in this position all season. Uh, by the way, Kawhi Leonard, like you mentioned earlier, has not played in the last four games. So if they're without Kawhi. Is it knee inflammation? Knee inflammation, inflammation with Kawhi. Who knows what it actually is? Issues, maybe no, no. Uncle Dennis is in his ear. Who knows? But <laughs> it, if he is out and he misses any games, I think the Mavs, the Mavs are advancing to the second round. I would already season. give the Mavs a slight edge just on, based on how the two teams are trending. But if Kawhi's out, 
it's a pretty significant edge, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Paul George, we know he can go. He dropped 40 yesterday, but like, I don't think he's out doing a combination of Luka and Kyrie. And this, and I think in this version of the series, and we'll do once this is solidified, we'll do a more in-depth preview, but uh, the Mavs will not have to fear Evita Zubats completely destroying them uh, yeah. this year because they have centers who can actually play basketball. They, they have centers that uh, are uh, worthy of being in the Correct. NBA. Remember, I mean, this season, Coop, in the preseason, remember when the Mavs played Real Madrid and we were like, their centers are better? They were. Real Madrid centers were better than the Dallas Mavericks centers in the preseason. It was embarrassing. And I don't remember if Li- – I don't think Lively He didn't play in that games. one. I remember thinking their centers are better than Kleba and Powell. And – and um, whoever, Holmes, who's yeah. gone now. And now you got Gafford and Lively, and you feel like that center combination, at minimum, can hold their own against any in the league and, in most cases, be better. So It's getting fun, man. It's, uh, it's exciting. How about uh, DFW Sports, man? The Rangers are off to How about this? Star. The Stars. Oh, look at, first of all, Spam MFFL if you're loving the vibes right now. And Coop right on cue. I didn't even know he was doing this with this graphic. Uh, run the up and up, baby. Oh, it's it's awesome right now, man. The Mavs fifth in the West. The vibes are all time high. Playing like the best team in the West. The Stars, 107 <laughs> points. They are the best team in the Western Conference right now with four games remaining. So hopefully they can keep it up and make a deep run. In the World Series champs, the Texas Rangers, a good start to this year as well. It's been awesome in DFW, man. That's, it really has. I mean, Enjoy it, fellas, because this is not normal. It, it does not. It doesn't get much better than How this. How about man. this? The Cowboys, I would say, are the worst team of the four right uh, now. They are. I don't think it's even close. Yeah, it's, it's Jer- Jerry's uh, spending too much money trying to get John Calipari to Arkansas. Yeah, Jerry's either on the yacht or trying to get Arkansas basketball back. So enjoy that. All right, a little tangent to sign off here. He's Coop. I'm Harry. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. Peace.